As recently as July 11th, the OAS had noted the CEO's defiance of the GCOM chairperson by submitting a final report which includes data compiled prior to the national recount. The OAS has clearly stated that there could be no justification for this action and that the CEO acted in bad faith and contrary to the interests of democracy in Guyana. Mr. Chairman, we fully agree with the OAS conclusion that the only democratic solution for Guyana at this time is to respect the results of the national recount. This is fully in keeping with Guyana's commitments under the democratic charter. In democracy, leaders step aside when they're voted out of office. That speaks to the importance and strength of institutions, not individuals, and to the power of the people, not those who would usurp their power. Senior U.S. officials, including the Secretary of State, have made numerous public statements about Guyana since the March elections. We stand with the Guyanese people. Their government must heed their will. Elections must be free, fair, credible, and transparent. Mr. Chairman, Secretary Pompeo has stated time and again there would be consequences for individuals who seek to undermine democracy. That is why on July 15th, he announced visa restrictions on individuals who were responsible for undermining democracy in Guyana. And these could also include members of their families. Our actions came after months of warnings and expressions of concern. We do not take it lightly. This measure is intended to send a clear message of the consequences of subverting democracy and the rule of law. Mr. Chairman, I hope that it is not lost on Guyana's leaders how swift international support for our action has been. The CARICOM chair said the entire world knows a small group is trying to hijack Guyana's elections. Canada has demanded a swift and transparent conclusion to the election process and held accountable those who prevent it. Brazil has called on Guyana's leaders to respect the popular will. The United Kingdom has begun the process of imposing sanctions against culpable officials. This is not an accident. There's no way to minimize how flagrant the actions of Guyana's leaders have been. The United States has long said that we have no preference in favor of one party or the other, as long as, as it is selected through a free, fair, and credible electoral process. That is why the work of the OAS remains so important throughout our region. It is not too late for Guyana, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary General. We call upon its leadership to honor the results of democratic elections and ask all sides to work together to develop new mechanisms for inclusive politics and government. If stalemate continues, however, it will only be the Guyanese people who suffer. A Partnership for National Unity and its leaders face a stark choice. Does the party want to be a leader in the hemisphere? Does Guyana want to be a leader in the hemisphere? And an example of democracy? Or does it want to be an international pariah? Does Guyana want to have a functioning executive and legislature so it can pass the laws it needs to encourage the development of its people? Or does it want to remain a country whose leaders cannot travel and are subject to sanctions? These are the choices facing Guyana today. Our meeting today reflects the severity of Guyana's predicament, and we hope that Guyana makes the right choice. 